At the beginning of creation, it was not only man who was blessed with the ability to sing, but all creatures, all animals and birds. Each one of them could sing, and each added its own color and tone to the symphony of creation. But when the creatures went astray, and the flood came to destroy all flesh, musical talents were reserved solely for man and certain species of birds. All the animals could do was roar, bark, crow, or bray. Why the birds? Because they are the purest and most pleasing creatures. Why do birds sing? To give thanks and praise to the Lord when spring approaches, at daybreak, or at sunset. Man should learn from the birds and devote his song solely to the Creator. And whenever Hasidim get together, they spend much time in song. The most profound concepts of all are expressed in storytelling. Once there lived a great king among the Cossack tribes who ruled over a lofty mountainous region. A long battle raged between him and the Russian Tsar, who persistently tried to conquer the Cossacks' land. But the Cossacks were strong and powerful, and could not be conquered. Finally, the Russians offered a political solution, sending emissaries with all kinds of promises. The Cossack king was tempted by the offer and descended from the heights to begin negotiations. As soon as he came down from the mountains, the Russians captured him, arrested him, and imprisoned him in the dungeon. As this tribal leader, Shamil, sat in prison, he sang a song expressing how he felt when he was at his peak, high above all, the master of his own will. How I was enticed, he sang. I descended lower and lower, and now I have fallen into the depths of the dungeon. How good it was once. But this is not the end. One day I will escape and return to the mountains. He hoped that he would be free someday and regain his former status. Alas, we're now in distress. Hasidim have taken this song as their motif, as their theme. There once was a soul that had reached great heights, but was tempted and descended to the lowest depths. But this is not the end, for still there is hope, and we will rise again. And so this song continues to go higher and higher. There is a communion of souls, as brethren dwell together. The Nigun intensifies love and friendship, strengthening bonds among the Hasidic groups. As the soul frees itself from its bonds, differences among people are cast off, and everyone links with one another like the sparks that form one great torch. This is the inspiration of togetherness, of the songs of happiness. Yeah.
хлопцы, что ли с нами будет? Мы поедем на Камчамке, там и лоска будет. Не журите хлопцы, что ли с нами будет? Мы поедем на Камчамке, там и лоска будет. According to the Kabbalah, everything originates in holiness, yet some things have lost their sanctity. Here the redemption inherent in the Nigun is manifested. It is elevated from its downward-oriented context of lowliness and directed heavenward, expressing total love of God and the very roots of the human soul. Do not worry, fellows, about what will become of us, for soon we will reach the inn, and there we will drink vodka. Do not worry, comrades, what is to become of us, for we shall reach the inn and hear the Rebbe's Hasidic words, as refreshing as vodka that revitalizes and warms the heart. And then all shall be well, for the spirits purify all. Song can change the global order and influence the course of world events. Milchamot lo chaserim, because she parza lifnei kematayim shana a milchama ben. There's no lack of wars, and when war broke out about 200 years ago between Napoleon and the Russian Tsar, the Jews were divided as usual, even the chaserim. Chelik ma chaserim, v'olai chelik ha'ari. Some Hasidim, perhaps the majority, the eldest ones, said that we were already familiar with the Russians and their pogroms, their attacks on Jews. Now, Napoleon bears a message of freedom. He promises freedom. They heard that he would bring liberation, and so they sided with Napoleon. But the first Lubavitcher Rebbe, the one they call the Alter Rebbe, Rabbi Shneir Zalman of Liadi, claimed that the freedom promised by Napoleon does not originate in holiness and would actually be harmful for Jews, bringing assimilation and other ills. Therefore, one must oppose him and help the Russians. When the Rebbe was informed about Napoleon's military campaigns, he asked to hear that army's martial music. And when they copied the march and sang it for the Rebbe, he said that one could hear victory in it. Let us take this song for ourselves and sing it, for then victory will be ours. The Rebbe and his Hasidim sang the march several times, and it became a Hasidic nigun. To this day, at the high point of the closing prayer on Yom Kippur, a day entirely devoted to forgiveness and atonement, they sing Napoleon's march with all their might, crying, Didam Yenatseach, a Talmudic expression meaning, Victory is ours. For their nigunim, Hasidim also borrowed the music of the waltzes they heard around them. They did not consider this to be assimilation, for all melodies originate in the music of the Holy Temple. 
The melodies, like the Jewish people, were dispersed among the nations following the temple's destruction, and the Hasidim are restoring them to their origins. Song and dance, a means of approaching God. There are many Hasidic communities, each with its own repertoire. Sometimes the Rebbe, the community leader, may compose some of the melodies himself, but it is always the Rebbe who determines which melodies are fit to be accepted. Women sing too, but never in the presence of man. This is forbidden, for it is written, a woman's voice is lewdness. Many women claim that their singing is more beautiful than that of the men, but no man will ever be able to find out if this is so. The Rebbe, the head of the community, is the focus of all. The honor accorded to him and the stories surrounding him are common to all Hasidic sects. The Holy Rebbe of Kaliv, Reb Yitzchak Isaac Taub, of blessed memory, once went out to the forest to commune with the Divine Presence. As he was walking along the forest paths, he heard a young shepherd singing a song of yearning. Forest, O oh forest, how great you are! Rose, O oh rose, how distant you are! Attracted by this song of yearning, he decided to elevate it spiritually. He approached the young man and bought the melody from him. But instead of singing, Forest, O oh forest, how great you are, Rose, O oh rose, how distant you are, he sang about the exile. Besides composing their own nigunim, the great rebbe's would also have their house composers. They tell of one such composer who made it a practice to visit his rebbe just before the Sabbath. One Friday afternoon, deeply engrossed in his own thoughts and concerns, he suddenly realized that the sun was about to set and he had lost his way in the forest. The pathways were dangerous at that time, teeming with thieves and murderers who could do as they pleased, 
for anarchy reigned on the open road. Suddenly, four rogues attacked the Hasid, took all his money, and were about to take his life as well. In the midst of the fray, he realized that the highwaymen were sharpening their knives to slaughter him. He began pleading for his life. At least grant me my last request. A spark of compassion arose within them, and they granted him this last wish. They released him from his bonds, and he went deep into the forest under their watchful eyes, of course, and began to chant Lechun Ranana, using the Rebbe's special melody, continuing until he reached Lechadodi. It turned out that the highwaymen were Jews. The song reminded them of their origins, and they asked the Hasid to take them to the Rebbe. The Rebbe accepted their penitence, and as a sign of remorse for their deeds, he commanded them to be virtuous and upright. Merging with nature, seclusion, and communion are another way for man to approach God. Breslover Hasidim seclude themselves in nature for an hour each day. In the 18th century, the religious and messianic crisis and the despair caused by the false messianism of Shabtai Tzvi formed the background for the emergence of new ideas, a different leadership, a new social order, and powerful ecstatic religious outpourings that gave rise to the Hasidic movement. 
from now on, God could be approached not only by great Torah scholars, but by everyone through prayer, piety, and song. The movement spread throughout Poland, Hungary, Russia, and Romania, splitting into many different communities and sects. At the head of each sect was the Tzadik, the Rebbe, from whom numerous dynasties developed over the years. In some communities, the Rebbe is perceived as a king and Hasidism as a kingdom. So it is in the court of the Rebbe of Belts. His Hasidim from all over the world came to celebrate the bar mitzvah of his only son, Aharon Mordechai Rokeach. The tzaddik is the link between the celestial and the earthly. His success depends on the genuine encounter between himself and the flock that rises to revere him. Jewish song activates the music of the celestial spheres, the song of angels of the divine presence. Joy exceeds all bounds on the Purim holiday. The study hall becomes the court of King Ahasuerosh of Persia, where the holiday miracle took place. A wedding is one of the community's loftiest and most emotional experiences, especially when the groom is the son of the Rebbe. Tens of thousands of people came to the wedding of the Belza Rebbe's son. Hasidim from the Belts Court in Jerusalem and from all over the world. The groom saw his bride to be only once in a fleeting glance before the ceremony. The wedding day is a kind of personal day of atonement for the bride and groom on which all their sins are forgiven. Guests attending the wedding are graced with a similar pardon.
The musical scale symbolizes the stages through which man passes as he ascends to the highest stage of all, devotion to the Creator. Every musical scale begins with the note Do. As one ascends through the octaves, the Do recurs, but in higher pitches. This is also true of man. As he rises and approaches his highest spiritual level, he must always remember the first Do, the beginning, the origin, from whence he came and to which he will return.